Hello. Um, today I thought I would kind of talk about the <clears throat> about Star Wars and the state it seems to be in. Um, at least from the perspective that I can see, and some others I've heard talk about it. Um, mainly from those who aren't fond of the Disney Star Wars films. And uh, before I get too much further into this, if anyone watching enjoys the Disney Star Wars films, fine. You have every right to, and just know I'm not meaning any of this, any uh, possible negativity, I'm going to say, uh, will, is an insult to you. Um, because I've tried to do my best not to insult anybody that enjoys these new films that I don't enjoy. You know, this series in particular, uh, Film Talk, I usually do my best, uh, no matter what I talk about, uh, I try and be talking about things I enjoy. I myself enjoy Star Wars, uh, and particularly the first six Star Wars films, the one George Lucas was involved in. And, um, I want to focus mostly on films I enjoy, or people in the movie industry, or even television. You know, I could talk about television, I think. Filmmaking techniques are used for TV, so why not? But, um, you know, I, I, I really want to just say it doesn't really look very good. Um, Ryan Johnson uh, has a new trilogy. I've never really addressed this, but I'm pretty sure most of you, if not all of you watching this, know that. He, his will be a completely new story, or a new set of films, this trilogy that has yet to uh, be explored. And I kind of uh, omitted myself from saying story because... There was a statement, uh, and I got this from a video, uh, who of a guy who reads out some information on various things, Star Wars in particular, uh, because it's a huge thing at the moment. You know, talking about Star Wars and news of Star Wars because of all the movies they're making. Um, I'll try and have a link in the description of this video. And in his description, he has the link. But anyway, what has basically been happened is with this new trilogy that Ryan Johnson is doing, um, he has no story, and yet they're already making the films or beginning to make the movie. Like the, we're getting on with production essentially as the bottom line. Ryan Johnson doesn't have a story. From the time before episode 8 came out, where well, he was after episode 8. Whatever, I can't remember exactly when this happened, but whenever it was that J.J. Abrams was ever announced to direct episode 9, it was around that same time Ryan Johnson was announced to be helming a Star Wars trilogy that he gets to create. I believe that was December. It's March now, and he's had time to potentially create a little, let's say, a 10-page outline or so of what he would like to see happen in these uh, film, films of his, and yet apparently a representative of Johnson or somebody close to him who works with him or his friends or whatever, uh, Apparently, it's been revealed he has no story planned for this trilogy. And yet, they're already on the way of essentially making these films. Now, that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I've said before, uh, sometimes on this channel, you know, I've been part of making films, I've acted in films and behind the scenes of movies and such. So, you know, I, and I've also expressed I want to make movies, I've written movies and stuff, but I always have had a, 
an outline. That way, you know, whether it be five pages, ten pages, whatever, before I start writing a script or anything, I make sure that I have like at least a basic outline of the story. And I think Ryan Johnson should have that. He's had since December to have such a thing. Now, it doesn't need to be fleshed out or anything, but, you know, the early stages of essentially what he would want in the films should essentially kind of be in the early stages of being drawn out. And if, from the sounds of it, they're already heading to make sure they're getting into production and making it, and when you hear something like that, it's like, we're about to make the movies? Uh, though that could also have been a, potentially a uh, bad wording on the part of the guy. I'll just say that. It could be that. But regardless, I feel the fact that he says he, he doesn't really have a story planned. He's had since like three months or so, three four months, to plan one is just, it's quite sad and potentially worrying. Uh, though when I first heard he was going to have his own trilogy, with the result of that was The Last Jedi, as you people know if you've seen that hour long video I made, I was not fond of it. Nor was I fond of The, La or the Force Awakens. Um, though I have said before, I did enjoy the first the Force Awakens, or at least I did my best to convince myself of such. You know, I recently looked back on that video, the original video of me talking about The Force Awakens, and I myself see that I was just doing my best to try and conceal any kind of disappointment I actually felt, because I wanted to believe Disney could make a good Star Wars film, or at least with them owning it, at least. And they didn't. I've gone on record here saying the only good film I think they've made so far is Rogue One. And I think that's sad because I feel the episode films should be the ones that you enjoy and want to rewatch. Not a spin off uh, or one shoot film with main characters we're never going to see again. essentially said all I needed to know about, or, I, or what I've, I've said all I want to about Force Awakens and Last Jedi, so you can watch those films if you want, or videos, yeah, go watch those films if you want, uh, I'm sure many of you probably have um, already, and you either like them or you don't. Uh, also with the spin-off films, for instance, um, I'm not going to talk about Solo, really, because I'm like, I just don't... Until I see the movie, I don't really want to talk a whole lot about it. But I made a video some time ago. It was live, and it was kind of... Jittery, kind of... It was like... I mean, I mean, you heard the audio, but in terms of... If you're going to watch it, it was like that. It just kind of... Like, every time I moved or whatever... Or talking, if, you know, you, you couldn't really see my mouth move, except for a little bit. But that's all aside the point. The point was, I did a video about Obi Wan Kenobi, the standalone film they're going to do. And of all the potential films they announced, and whatever possibilities they could have made for standalone films. Obi-Wan Kenobi was the one I thought would be the most interesting to see. Rogue One, as much as I enjoyed the film, was not needed. Uh, let's all be honest. We got all we needed to know about what happened to get in the Death Star plans in the crawl of A New Hope. In the crawl of Episode 4. We didn't really need a movie explaining what happened. Um, but we got one and it was entertaining, so... 
you know, uh, thumbs up uh, for that, I say. Though if you aren't fond of Rogue One, that's fine. Um, I enjoyed it myself, but to each their own. And I will say, though, um, regarding um, this Obi-Wan film, there's been no development since they really announced it. Now, they don't need to tell us the exact story, but, you know, at some point, with the dates getting nearer from when they said the film is supposed to come out, it's like, okay, come on, you have had since, like, last summer to do a to get some people on board to write the thing at least and you should by now at least have a sort of synopsis of sorts like people I've heard really want it to be between episodes 3 and 4 and I have to say I, when, I, when I think about it it might not actually have a whole lot of action in the film because you know if it's between 3 and 4, Obi-Wan can't really use his lightsaber, because then, oh well, people will know, Jedi's on Tatooine, and I'm sure then the Empire would hear of a Jedi, because they're trying to kill Jedi, essentially, still at that point. Um, Darth Vader would probably catch wind of this and might go himself to try and see to this personally. Uh, especially, you might think it's Obi-Wan. I should probably could sense it was Obi-Wan, so... The whole point of Obi-Wan being on Tatooine is to be discreet. Um, we could just see what goes on with Obi-Wan's life. Uh, around the time of his like self-imposed exile. Uh, we could possibly get Qui-Gon Jinn back. To help teach him how to become one with the Force. Um, I feel that could be a possibly interesting plot point. Um, and who knows? I mean, I'm, a possibility is, you know, you could just think of the various things an Obi-Wan film could have between 3 and 4. I think a, three, a, a film with Obi-Wan between 3 and 4 is the best option myself. Because I don't think people want to watch a film with a young kid as Obi-Wan Kenobi. We have Ewan McGregor. People like Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. People want to keep, I think people want to keep seeing him as Obi-Wan Kenobi in one way or another. Best way would be this Obi-Wan film. So, it's like... Come on. Let's just... Get going with that, have more details and information and such. It's almost summer. I mean, let's, let's get on it. Um, that's what I say. Um, oh, and another thing, um, the, uh, the audio book and the book of The, four, of the Last Jedi is out. Um, and apparently it explains how Rey knows how to use the Force. You know, when Snoke was doing this, like, force call thing so Rey and Kylo could see each other through out the galaxy and such, uh, apparently when doing that, Rey, when she was able to see him, she got the ability to learn the ways of the force and how to fight just like Kylo Ren did with these force for some screen calls, I guess you could say, uh, FaceTime, I've heard some people say, force uh, FaceTime, and I mean that whole thing was just odd and weird, and I have no problem with uh, communication throughout the force, but I'm not sure if force FaceTime, as some say, is the best way, I mean look at the connection of the Force with Luke, Vader, and Leia had. Vader and Luke 
or Vader and Leia have with Luke for, in like episode 5 communicating throughout the with the force but they can't see each other they just look up or this or that and they just they hear Luke 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 can hear Vader and all of that I think that was good I think we could just know we could just have that or something of that sort we didn't need to have Kylo and Rey see each other and this was Snoke's doing also. And also, when she touched Kylo's hand, apparently that truly clinched that. That's what truly had it that she knew the Force. And she knew how to wield a lightsaber. Yet that explains it for that movie, but not The Force Awakens, because remember, she knew how to use the Jedi mind trick. She knew how to combat with a lightsaber. People say, well, staff and stuff. Are too. No. A staff and a lightsaber would be two different things. A s lightsaber is essentially a sword. It's a laser sword. It's what they used to be called in the early scripts that George Lucas had. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't... I'm not sure what exactly... But, you know, from all that, it's just so... It's a bit of a mess, to say the least. Um, and, uh, I just... I want Star Wars to be great again. It was great with George Lucas uh, being the head of Lucasfilm in charge of Star Wars. About six great films. I think, at, at the very least... They used Lucas's story, his outlines, his concepts. They kept him involved to help shape the story. And then have him be on a career of a consultant through these films. It could be a lot better. It could be... These films could be better. Um, but, yeah. It's just... It's just a mess. And I don't even know what... If, 10 through 12 will be, because I'm, well, let's be honest, that's going to happen. Um, that's the most George Lucas ever thought of Star Wars. And in the timeline of this decision and uh, him naming A New Hope, Episode 4, and Empire Strikes Back, Episode 5, that's kind of debated. Some say, well, that came along with when doing Empire Strikes Back, and he really sat and thought about it, and having all the material he made with various drafts for the original Star Wars, including like that 300 page, 250, 300 page script of Star Wars he had. Um, he had written for Star Wars, that became a template for episodes 4 through 6, and he had a little bit stuff that could be little hints and little pieces of the prequels of sorts. But mostly episodes 4 through 6. Um, you know. And he had a lot of material just even aside from that 300 page script. You know, he had various versions of that of the original of the scripts for the original films. So there's tons of material that could make 12 films. And again, of the timeline of when that was, you know, made, or that decision was made by Lucas to have them be 12 films. And, um, because I saw there was a commercial for Star Wars. There was, like, a compilation that were made of this, and like, it said, like, 12 Adventures of Star Wars. You see the first chapter already, you know, get ready for, like, 12 more, or like 12, or a total of 12 films in the Star Wars saga, and like, advertising for like, I believe, toys or something? Around the time the toys were making, get, becoming big, and they wanted people to be more possessed, so I think around the 70s, still, that was made, um, and there's some... Hence, with the, that Lucas wanted 
A New Hope to Be episode 4, but those from the studio said you can't do that uh, because there is no 1 through 3. This is the first movie. It would confuse people. So we just didn't have it be episode 4 until 1981 when it got re released um, after Empire. Uh, but again, that timeline for that is kind of, I guess as a side note, but I only bring that up with 12 films because, you know, you know, I'm sure there'll be a 10 through 12 at one point. And with the story now, with what they're doing, I, I'm not sure what that will be. I'm not sure what they could do. That's another reason why I say, you know, what through six would be the real Star Wars films for me, beginning, middle, and end. And it all was great. I find, um, but that's just my thoughts on this whole situation. Um, it's not nearly as long of a video as I seem to typically make it more. It seems to be like a half hour, um, but it's like 21 minutes right at the moment. Um, so yeah, I could go on and ramble, but you know, I could just be going on about, oh, Star Wars 8, Star Wars 7, and I'm like I've made videos about those films already, how I feel, and that I think they're just not good films now. With 7, uh, I didn't think it was very, that, that was good. Uh, I kind of fooled myself into convincing myself for a while to try and think it was good. But after watching various videos of people have discussed it in very in depth, both positive and negative, I don't know the negativity kind of brought out my true feelings for the films, and I don't want it to be like, oh, you see, oh, you just let the negative uh, things impact you. No, I saw negative uh, videos about the prequels to see if they have legit criticisms and I still love the prequels to this day so let's just say if that was the case and I let those videos inform my view of The Force Awakens uh, then I would have let other negative I would have let negative videos about the prequels influence my thought thoughts on the prequels and I didn't but you know just the way people were very critical were very in depth with Force Awakens, and they weren't being. And these are some videos I saw that weren't patronizing to anybody who liked the Force Awakens or was being rude to anyone who likes the Force Awakens. Those were the videos that truly helped come to that conclusion and brought out what I try to hide <laughs> deep inside me that what I actually knew, which was that this was not those. It wasn't a good film. I wanted it to be a good film. I wanted it to be wrong in my thinking. I have a bad feeling about this now that Disney owns Lucasfilm. I really wanted it to be wrong. I genuinely did. Um, yeah. So the state of Star Wars, I feel, isn't very good. Which it was good, their franchise, or perhaps used to be my favorite franchise. Uh, I don't really think Star Wars 9 will be any better for this trilogy. I just don't think it will be. I hope it will, but. I have to wait till next year. And, uh, yeah. That's it. So, until next time, I'll see you all later on. See you next week, basically. Have a good week weekend. And, uh, peace out. See you all later.